Pastor Joseph, and thank you for watching this presentation of Jesus or Muhammad Marathon here on ABN. I want to share some statistics with you. I spoke earlier in the previous segment about the, uh, the growing Islamic population. In 1950, there were 152 million Muslims in the Middle East. In 2000, the year 2000, that had grown to 342 million, more than a hundredfold increase. Now they're projecting in the year 2050 for that number in the Middle East now to grow to 963 million. And folks, the Middle East, uh, Middle Eastern Muslim population only makes up 17 percent of the Middle Eastern population in the world. So it's vital we get this information out, and folks. You can be a big partner with us in sharing this, this, the truth about Islam and the violence, violent ties to terrorism, uh, to all English-speaking uh, countries out there. We desperately need your help, though. You can help us by going to abnsat.com or calling live here at 248-416-1300. And we've just had a uh, few people uh, call up, and I want to thank, uh, we had two, two viewers uh, call and donate $100 apiece, and another viewer uh, donate $500. So I want to thank you very much and, and just uh, pray God's blessings on you and that uh, that would come back to you a uh, hundredfold. Thank you very much for watching, and please be a partner with us. No gift is too small and certainly not too big. Back to you, Pastor Joseph. Thank you, Brother Bruce. And uh, I know that we've had some callers here in the last uh, 15 minutes, and I want to uh, beg your indulgence that if you would just uh, uh, be patient, Brother Osama and I will be back at 11 p.m. Eastern. Now, if you're waiting on the line and you are waiting until the end of the show, we'll try to get to you to at least state your question or comment. Mm -hmm. But right now, we do need to respect uh, Brother Osama and let him move forward in this uh, presentation. Brother Osama. Well, we will just put a few more verses uh, about yeah. slavery in the Old Testament. I have a few verses in the New Testament as well. We'll see yeah. what the Lord's going to do. Yes. Whatever we cannot finish now, we'll pick up in the evening. Yes. And uh, th we're talking about the treatment of the workers, mm -hmm. those people who sold themselves to uh, another Hebrew in the Old Testament. Will he just uh, treat them however he wish uh, during this years of work? Or there is law is already given in the Bible, in the uh, book of Exodus and uh, other books in the Bible, uh, how you should treat the people who work for you. Uh, I will share with you in chapter uh, 21, Exodus 21, verses 26 and 27. Uh, if we can have this uh, slide on the screen, that will be good. And we will read what the Bible said. In Exodus 21, verse 26 and 27, the Bible said, And if a man yeah, smite go. the eye of his servant or the eye of his maid, that it perish, he shall let him go free for his eye's sake. And if he smite out his manservant's tooth or his maidservant's tooth, he shall let them go free for his tooth's sake. You have a contract to work for this gentleman for six years, the longest you can work. And as you start working with him, somehow something happened and he poked out your eyes or broke one of your teeth or your arm broke or your foot broke. Uh, there is no lawyer then. You cannot go and sue him, but you will walk free. <laughs> no you, class action lawsuit. No class action okay. lawsuit, of course. So you walk out free. That is exactly, that's exactly what the Bible teaches, how the master or the owner of this worker for the six years, the longest he can work, should treat the people who work for him. Mm -hmm. Now I will go to the book of Deuteronomy and uh, 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 see also how is the treatment between a master and a person whom he bought for the six years to work. Uh, in case he did something wrong and this uh, gentleman who's working run away, how should you treat the person who run away uh, if he was not treated right by uh, the gentleman he worked for. Deuteronomy <laughs> chapter 23, verses 15 and 16. And we will continue with the reading of the Bible. Uh, the Bible said, Let's take the audio there, Deuteronomy 23. Do we have the audio, please? Thou shalt not deliver unto his master the servant which is escaped from his master unto thee. He shall dwell with thee, even among you, in that place which he shall choose in one of thy gates, where it liketh him best. Thou shalt not oppress him. If a person is running away from his master, because, you know, he's, he's going to say, I'm going to pick up your eyes out, I'm going to broke your arm, mm. and you start running away, yeah. and you went to the neighbor of this person, 
You let him literally live in whatever land he chooses to live. And, uh, uh, and by the way, that would take us also even to, uh, in the biblical, and a little bit more depth on that, the city of refuge. Yes. If you, by accident, you hurt somebody and you kill them. Yeah. Uh, so you cannot take this guy and say, oh, you work for Mr. Smith. I'm going to take you back to Mr. Smith. No, you mm. can't do that. Right. He will live in your land until the time is up and he can go free. So that's often protection, uh, uh, Brother Joseph, to the people who work in, in the land of somebody. And also uh, until, it, I think it says too, uh, or until that justice can be brought and it can be brought to a court that is fair. Absolutely. There's, yeah. uh, there's always judges. There's yeah. always elder in the, yeah. in the, uh, the Jewish community. Right. It's not because it may be, what about this guy? He's accused his master being, by being not treating him justly. Right. You, you, it, you cannot have it both ways. Yeah. I mean, uh, one way or no other way. It could be the person does not want to work. He got the money money for the six years and he found some excuse not to work. By the way, what were the cities of refuge in uh, Saudi Arabia under Islamic law? Uh, <laughs> uh, there's no such a thing. It's only <laughs> okay, in, the, okay. in the biblical just understanding. Make sure. Let's go to one more passage in the book of Leviticus, uh, chapter 27, verse 1, and uh, we're going to actually keep going in this more than just this next okay. three verses. Okay. Uh, the Bible says in Leviticus, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When a man shall make a singular vow, the person shall be for the Lord by thy estimation. And thy estimation shall be of the male from twenty years old, even unto sixty years old. Even thy estimation shall be fifty shekels of silver after the shekel of the sanctuary. Continue with the rest of the verses. And if it be a female, then thy estimation shall be thirty shekels, and if it be from five years old, even unto twenty years old, then thy estimation shall be the male twenty shekels, and for the female ten shekels. And if it be a month old, even unto five years old, then thy estimation shall be of the male five shekels of silver, and for the female thy estimation shall be three shekels of silver. As I was, uh, Brother Joseph, watching a YouTube video, yeah. and uh, this lady, she brought these verses, uh, chapter 27 of the book of Leviticus. Yeah. Here it is, the price is of the slave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The men she, are favored over the women yeah. in the Bible. Right? And the women have less price. Yeah. And uh, she reminded me of the, the uh, it's a true story, by the way. Mm. This uh, lady, she took the prayer out of the school system in America. Yeah. And she used to teach her son, who now is a preacher. Yeah. And she used to tell him that the Bible mm. has so much contradiction. Oh, and Look he's at a this. preacher that the guy. Ark, yeah, the ark here, yeah. uh, uh, God is asking uh, the people about to cover it with tar, black tar. Yeah. And the ark here, God is asking people to cover it with gold. I mean, should yeah. he cover it with gold or tar? Not knowing, <laughs> not knowing that here is the ark, more, uh, Noah's ark. The, the it's, it's huge, a boat. Yeah. And you have to cover it with tar to stop any water from going in. Yeah. But the Ark of the Covenant, the small, small Ark of the yeah. Covenant, Completely and it covers it with coal. Different thing. So obviously, people always speak with ignorance. <laughs> it's, she was an atheist lady, yeah. and she brought these uh, verses from the Bible. Marine O'Hare, Madeline O'Hare. Yeah, think, to yeah. give us the prices of the slave according to the Bible. Yeah. No, my dear sisters and brothers, that's not the price of slave. These are the people who give a vow to serve the Lord in the house of the Lord. Nobody bought them. They give themselves to serve the Lord. Uh, a good sample of this, Samuel, he served the Lord from the year two. Samuel, the prophet, his mama brought him to the house of the Lord, and he served from the year two until he died without getting any money. But here we see the vow Concerning these people, give themselves to serve the Lord in the house of the Lord, not to be slave for some Hebrews in their homes, in their farm, or somewhere else. There's different prices for different people. Obviously, if you get a young man who's in his 20s, he can do a little bit harder work, Brother Joseph, than, yeah. the, than the gentleman who's in his 80s. Right. So, and he's going to serve the Lord a little bit longer. He can cut the wood. He can carry heavy water. Yeah. Uh, ladies and younger people uh, will do a little bit soft work, clean up. You know, uh, uh, simple things. So the longer the person serves the Lord in the house of the Lord, yeah. the, the bigger money he will receive from the house of the Lord. And the older, the less money. Men are more muscles. They will receive more money than us. And obviously, this money they take and they give to their family. Right. As they give the vow themselves to right. serve the Lord. Not, may I say again, not somebody binds them to make yeah. them slave. And the girl have less money worse than men. Right. Uh, very right. Uh, important passage in the Bible. Yeah.